I have the distinct pleasure today to talk about the Spatial Audio Lab M4 Sapphire speaker. It is an open baffle design. I'm walking around the speaker now with the camera showing you what that actually means. So most speakers that we live with, that most audiophiles live with, are boxes. They may be very affordable boxes, they might be medium price or very high-end boxes, but they are box speakers. Open baffle speakers do not sound like boxes. They sound, well, more open. <laughs> that, is the th that is the first thing you notice when you listen to it. And if you've never heard an open baffle speaker, you have been missing out on something really special. And that's why I am like super excited today to talk about this speaker. Because everywhere you turn <laughs> and look at its design, it's kind of different. It's not kind of different, it's a lot different. Now it's a two-way speaker. And let's just look at what I was about to call the tweeter. Well, it's not exactly a tweeter because most tweeters are crossed over at about 2K or 1800 or something like that, right? This tweeter, this driver is crossed over at 576 hertz. That's very, very low crossover. And it's a second order uh, slope. That's amazing, meaning it's going way lower down into the, let's say, upper mid-range than a normal tweeter. Now, the two drivers below that, are, they're two 12-inch woofers, they, and they are open, as you can plainly see here. And then the stand of the speaker, the base of the speaker itself that the panel bolts onto, is just a beautifully designed, well, stand. And it also holds the crossover and the connectors for the speaker. Um, but the overall impression of handling this speaker is it is one of extremely high quality for the price. And I'll tell you the price right up front. It is $4,250 a pair in the U.S. Um, comes in many colors, uh, in satin finishes, in high gloss finishes. I think the, the speaker itself is extremely attractive because it's so elegant. It's so minimalist. Oh, and the warranty is five years. And speaking of important things, there will be an audiophiliac viewer system of the day. And stick around, please stick around for that. Let's delve a little bit into the setup requirements for this speaker. First, since it's an open baffle speaker, which means there's as much sound coming out of the back of the speaker from those two 12-inch drivers as coming out of the front. So you need to give the speaker some room to breathe. Plan on giving it three feet from the wall behind it. And there's not a lot of hedging here. A foot or so is not going to cut it. Now, it might, it might need a little more than three feet, but three feet is a good starting point. A little bit of toe in, you got to experiment with toe in, whatever's going to, you know, suit your taste. Because as you toe in, the speaker gets a little brighter. As you toe them out, it gets a little sweeter sounding, a little mellower on top. Now, one plus of having a dipole uh, design like this is there's very little bass coming off the side of the speaker. When you're standing next to the speaker, you hear very little bass. It, it's, it's like, are the woofers on? It's, it's that kind of shocking thing when you first hear it. But the good part of this is you can put the speaker fairly close to the side walls. It's not particularly sensitive to side walls, at least in the low end. So if you need to get it, let's say a foot or so to the side wall, it's probably gonna be okay. Better than most conventional box speakers, we'll put it that way. Over the course of this review, I did experiment with different amplifiers, and I started with the Shit Agir because I wanted to use an affordable amp. It's about an $800 amplifier, and that was fine. But as soon as I stepped up to the first watt F7 and first watt F8, it sounded a lot better. Better meaning just more organic and natural, and just the beauty factor jumped up a couple of notches. And I also used a Class D amplifier, the uh, MyTech Brooklyn, because it's a much more powerful amp, 250 watts a channel, I believe. And, uh, and then I really nailed it in terms of playing the speaker loud. And yes, put more power into the speaker, it will play louder with greater ease. As I said earlier, this speaker does not sound like a box speaker. It sounds closer. It has that being there quality. It lights up the room when you play exciting music. Yeah, if you play stuff with drums and percussion or brass instruments, the transit response is just so good. It has a live quality. 
It truly does. It's not like a horn speaker. Horn speakers, it's kind of different. And I'm going to get to that later because I'm going to compare the M4 to my Klipsch Cornwall 4s further on in this review. Yes, oh, and the bass. The bass goes down. It does go down to about 40 hertz. That's pretty good. It's not as deep as a subwoofer. No, it's not going to do that. But the thing about the bass, the M4's bass, is how fast it is, meaning pitch definition, edge definition. There's no blurring or smearing to the bass notes. There's no boom going on here. Just very precise sounding space. And not precise like uptight bass. No, it, this bass swings. This bass has rhythm to it. It's, it's one of the things that makes dipole speakers so exciting is that lack of, of boxiness to the bass. That slowing down, smearing, blurring. It just doesn't happen here. So this recording of Simon and Garfunkel in Central Park, it's sometime in the 80s. I was present at that concert, along with a couple of hundred thousand other fellow New Yorkers. And the thing that I was getting off the recording, playing it over the M4s, was the atmosphere of the event, the scale of it, the size of it, the space of it, because it was outdoors. Um, the M4s really got that right. So remember, this is a Simon and Garfunkel reunion concert. It's not a Paul Simon concert. It's a Simon and Garfunkel concert. And they're playing to their hometown crowd. And I really felt like I was picking up on this extra swagger to Paul Simon's vocals that just made it so good and so cool. Yeah, it was so much fun. I remember this concert pretty, pretty well. And uh, it was great. It was great to have it all come back like that. A lot of fun. Drums were treated especially well by the M4. The sense of sticks hitting the drum, hitting the cymbals, the brassiness of the cymbals. It really came through uh, so, so well. And bass drums, the, the beater on the drum was so distinct and clear. Really, really nice. As I mentioned earlier, the imaging of these speakers, when you have them dialed in and the toe in just right, the center focus is very, very sharp, but it's the sense of, let's say, dimensionality of each instrument and vocalist in a recording that you get from these speakers. I was just blown away. I kept hearing, you know, familiar recordings and saying, oh man, that is so amazing. That is so cool. Then there's this Keith Richards uh, record wingless angels it's in jamaica it's a basically a field recording you can hear the crickets around them and it's acoustic music it's chanting it's not it's not really reggae music i don't know what category you would put that in but it's essentially folk music and it's just the feeling of the singers and just the, the feel of the whole vibe of the session is extraordinary i've mentioned this recording before wingless angels you can stream it in various places. I highly recommend it. So, so far I've painted a very rosy picture of the sound, but I have, at, at that point, I hadn't done any comparisons with any other speaker, but it seemed obvious that I needed to, I must compare the M4s to my reference speakers, the Klipsch Cornwall 4s, a large horn-loaded speaker with a 15-inch woofer. And I started doing these comparisons, and yes, the Cornwalls do sound like bigger speakers. They had more brawn to the sound, just more weight and power. And they played louder with greater ease. They played dynamics more convincingly. Uh, Mid-range, oh, on Macy Gray's strip recording that she made for Chesky Records, I was present at that session. I would say the vocal, the mid-range was a bit, a, had more body and soul to it over the Cornwall 4s. But, <laughs> But the M4s had this life to them. They seemed more contrasty in their sound. Um, just the, the, the textures and things came through better over the M4s. The imaging was far more precise over the M4s. So the M4s couldn't compete with the Klipsch's for quiet, late night listening. We have to turn it way down. The sound of the Cornwall 4 was much better, much more involving than I was getting out of the M4s when I listened very, very quietly. So the M4s bass did not seem as powerful and as deep as the Cornwalls, but the definition far outclassed what I was getting out of the Cornwall 4s. 
Yeah, now I have to point out that the M4 is not the flagship of the line. They are, are bigger, more powerful spatial audio labs looming on the horizon, hopefully sometime in 2022. So there will be a rematch. But as it stands right now, yeah, I think the M4 is truly extraordinary. So yeah, if you're an audiophile on the journey, you're moving forward, hopefully, learning how to listen, learning what turns you on in terms of sound quality from your recordings, from your music. I think living with an open baffle speaker would be a, an education of the best sort. It will really take you places with your familiar music that you, you never knew existed. Okay, so now it's time for, so Steve, what do you really think? Well, I think you can tell. I was blown away by the sound of the M4s. I, I was so happy working on this review because I was engaged in the music in a different way than I am when I listen to box speakers. The, mu the speakers, just, I was flabbergasted sometimes because it's just such a different experience. So yeah, I had a lot of fun working on this review. I truly did. And uh, if you have the room, if you can do that, three feet away from the wall, if you have the right amp, right speaker, and you, you've got to match this speaker up to a good system because it is a very revealing, seriously transparent design, right? So you're not going to use it with a $500 receiver or something. It's probably not going to end well, right? Use it with good stuff. And the better the front end is, the better your turntable or DAC is, the better your preamp and power amp, the better this speaker is going to sound. It will reward you in, in untold ways. I mean, whatever. I mean, it's, it's an extraordinary achievement. And the price is not free, as my friend Herb Reichert likes to say. It's not free. It's $4,250. But for that kind of money, you will get incredible pleasure from listening to music. So yes, I think it's an amazing speaker. Oh, and speaking of amazing, it is now time for the Audiophiliac Viewer System of the Day. This one comes from John. He's 68 years old and he lives in Levin, New Zealand. Now the picture is of his current system, but it was a couple of years ago that he bought a Bose 650 lifestyle system, mostly for his TV and to play some old CDs. But then he bought a Riga Planet 3 turntable to play through the system and he really started listening and discovered his Bose speakers weren't exactly the best. <laughs> so he stepped up to a pair of fine audio F500s, and that's when things really changed. Oh, and he also, at that same time, bought a Riga Illicit R integrated amplifier. John says he could not believe what he had been missing out on for all of those years. He's thinking about upgrading to a Riga Planer 8 with a moving coil cartridge and a new phono preamp pretty soon. Thanks for sharing, John. Hey, <laughs> okay, we are back. My name is Steve Guttenberg. If you like what I'm doing here, if you like this video, please hit the like button and also consider subscribing to the channel if you have yet to do so. I would greatly appreciate it. And beyond that, well, you could also check out my Patreon, which can be found at patreon.com slash audiophiliac. And I will link to my Patreon in the description. And with that, I can say my work here is at last complete. Thank you again for watching. And I really, really do hope to see you back here again very, very soon. Bye-bye.